Hi everybody and uh, welcome to today's installation video. We're going to be looking at putting a, an open filter on this Jaguar X-Type 3 litre V6. It's a nice big V6, we want to hear a little bit more of the raw. Um, in doing so we're going to remove that airbox. Uh, ideally we'd put it where the battery is but uh, I don't really fancy locating that one into the boot so we're going to leave it there. Uh, and it's going to be a bit of a challenge because where the cone filter is going to sit um, it's going to sit a little bit offset to the trumpets. Um, the actual intake into the box is right there and it's probably going to sit a little bit further over to the driver's side whereas that airbox sort of fully bridges the front there. Obviously we've got the MAF there, the MAF sensor. Uh, we're going to keep that and the way that we're going to do it is we're going to take an existing airbox, we're going to cut the end off it, the tube that connects there, uh, and we're going to use that. So um, yeah, we're going to be using a donor airbox for that. We're going to lose a lot of the stuff that's in the front there, a lot of the airbox, the upper and the lower, um, and we're going to be replacing it with this cone filter, which is a ProRam uh, unit, so that is, uh, that's not been around very long, uh, they've probably been in production about six months. It's a, This is a universal cone filter, um, the inlet diameter is 76mm, so this is a, a nice universal fitment, uh, it's there, I'll put the part number up here. Um, one of their sort of K&N copies if you like, uh, and I've used Ram Air products in the past, they're pretty decent, I'm quite happy with that. So uh, yeah, to hook it all together we're going to be using, uh, we've got a shield there, but you know that one may or may not be used in due course it's a little bit large so we'll see what we can do to modify that to fit if we need to and we're going to be using that 76 mil silicon elbow uh, and a little aluminium joiner so uh, we're going to hook it all together with jubilee clips and um, effectively make our cut there hook it all together see how it works cool so here we are this is the standard uh, jaguar airbox it's uh, reasonably unrestricted I mean it flows through at an angle the uh, the air comes in one side and leaves the other we're not going to need the lower for this uh, this particular exercise you can see there I've taped around so that I've got my cut line um, it's just literally that bit of the inlet that we're going to use today so we're going to go ahead and uh, cut that off I've got my trusty Dremel um, honestly guys invest in a Dremel if you haven't already get hold of one of those uh, that is a universal plastic cutting disc it's uh, diamond coated so it goes through it pretty quickly uh, with no real issues at all and ultimately that 76 mil uh, elbow is going to hook straight onto there with a, a jubilee clip so let's get cutting a few moments later and there you go the math tube is now cut off the back of the airbox now if you hadn't realized this before uh, this is an irreversible mod so if you are going to be doing this uh, and you're not sure whether you want to keep it in the long term don't do it to your own airbox, buy a spare airbox. Now it's really important that you remove all of the swarf that's left stuck to the uh, the MAF tube. Uh, if that goes into your engine it's not going to be any good for it at all, so get rid of it as best you can. Uh, I'm picking it off. The stuff that doesn't shift I'll use a knife or I'll use an abrasive wheel um, attached to the Dremel. Either way, sandpaper, you name it, you can use it. Okay, back at the Jag, and uh, for some of you this step is superfluous, but for me I've got a Pre-05, so uh, this car has a, uh, an engine cover on it. The uh, oil filler cap comes off, three screws, and away goes the uh, the engine cover. Now that exposes the airbox, but it also exposes the rail that the uh, the engine cover connects to. And you're going to need to remove that rail in order to get the airbox out in its entirety. So first off, remove that battery cover. You'll be able to access the uh, the MAF sensor, as it is, or the airflow sensor. Note my little nifty mod there. Um, just trim away a little corner of the battery box cover, and you'll be able to get it off and on. Um, a lot easier than as it is standard. Quite why Jag designed it that way, I still have no idea. Carefully undo the MAF sensor connector block uh, just by pushing in on the little tab. It should slide off, might need a bit of persuasion. Don't use any heavy tools on it at all, otherwise you'd risk damaging it. Uh, and also you'll need, if you've still got the standard clip at least, you'll need a uh, slotted screwdriver or similar just to prise off the uh, the little locking clip which is similar to a uh, CV boot clip to be fair, so it's got like a little ear on it that uh, locks in place so that can cause you a bit of fun but uh, off it comes Now that you've unplugged the MAF and removed the clip holding the intake tube to the airbox upper, you can remove all of the screws that surround it and remove the cover itself. 
and there's always going to be one screw that just catches especially if like me you've got unexpected company there so now we have the air filter and the air filter cover removed we can start moving things back into place uh, that's the MAF sensor that's just going onto the new MAF tube uh, which we cut off the old airbox cover uh, that is my current MAF so I know that that works well I'm going to reuse that you can fit a new one if you really want to but it's easy to get to there's no real need to uh, so that's going to go on and that gives us the ability to see exactly how it's going to sit within the unit so we can faux fit that and see how it all matches up obviously this is the benefit of using the stock airbox upper you know that's going to be a flush fit and you can see that where it sits at the moment that filter isn't necessarily in the best position because that's where the air comes in it's the air is basically coming in at the point where the tube is so uh, it's also not going to be possible for us to fit it within that box itself people who fit the air filters within that box are actually restricting it quite heavily it's going to be drawing in more air from behind itself than it is from the air intake itself so let's remove that air box lower but before we do that let's at least jubilee clip the MAF tube onto the intake tube so that we know it's all a good fit and at this point I don't intend to remove that MAF tube again uh, I think it's perfectly safe there so I'm going to hook back up the MAF sensor uh, if you are planning to have this on and off each time you make an adjustment um, I wouldn't advise hooking that MAF sensor back up until you're actually done. Right so in order to remove the airbox lower you're going to need to remove the engine cover bracket mounting bracket. Um, now if your car is 2005 onwards I believe it still has this bracket um, but if it doesn't then well you probably save a little bit of a job here but uh, at the same time that bracket or those mount bolts that are holding in the airbox still need to come out so in this case off comes the bracket having removed that mounting rail we can now gain access to the bolts that hold the airbox lower in place at least the ones against the cam cover uh, there are two small screws that hold the inlet trumpets in place at the base of the airbox which also need removing both those screws are removed you'll be able to grasp the airbox either side give it a good firm tug because it's anchored in place with a rubber grommet underneath and uh, out it should come right you're going to need to cut the old brackets off the back of the airbox lower that you removed from the car in order to fit the mounting bracket for the engine cover um, also this will hold the resonator box if you don't have an engine cover fitted so it is necessary they are spaced such um, that it's not really ideal to use metal spacers and similar but I suppose you could do if you wanted uh, it'll be about an 8 or 10 millimeter spacer if you wanted to but if you've got a donor airbox you might as well cut them off and use them right and now we're about at the point where we can fit the intake tube with the open filter I've basically made a very simple bracket just to hold it uh, doesn't look particularly great but it'll do the job just for testing at least I've uh, got my hose clips already on there so uh, all I'm going to do is basically fit it tighten it up I'm going to mount that bracket to the uh, the furthest back uh, hole that the slam catch panel is, is sighted to uh, I've removed the factory screw from there and I'm just using a slightly longer one I'm going to put a nut on the end of it and just bolt it uh, make sure it's bolted underneath and if you've got headlight washers just be a bit careful because that's where the uh, supply for the, um, the screen wash goes through to the headlight washers uh, there's a, a large 12-14mm sort of diameter tube that runs behind there and there doesn't seem to be anything to actually clip it into so it, it just kind of rides in there uh, just be a little bit careful that you don't end up rubbing against it Check your work and make sure that everything is done up nice and tight. You can have a little bit of movement, but just make sure that there isn't too much and that anything that does move doesn't contact any hot surface. Then uh, refit your engine cover if you've got one, and uh, you're pretty much ready to go at this point.
right, so at this point it'd be good for us to remind ourselves what it was like with the original airbox. Um, fairly decent scores actually, this is at uh, 8 degrees Celsius. We're seeing an intake of 21 degrees when we're idling, uh, 17 at 30 miles an hour, give or take, uh, 16 at 40 and 14 at 50 miles per hour. So you can see that it drops as the vehicle speed increases, which is kind of what you expect anyway. That's a completely stock system, uh, and as I say, 8 degrees Celsius. Uh, pretty sure that it can be improved on if you look at the peak mass airflow it's 149.1 grams a second this is all measured using torque now moving to the cone filter we can see that the uh, inlet air temperature has risen to 39 degrees when we are idling which isn't surprising because there's no flow of air through into the uh, intake area whereas before obviously it was pulling the air through the trumpets once we hit 30 miles an hour the intake drops to 18 degrees uh, 40 miles an hour at 15 and 50 miles an hour at 13 which is actually an improvement over the stock intake system which I was quite surprised about but the speed at which it took to drop uh, made me think that there was a, uh, a restriction uh, in the form of those trumpets at the very front. Now those uh, dual intake trumpets were probably designed uh, put in place by Jaguar Boffins to increase airspeed throughout the, uh, the air filter box but um, yeah, once this modification is carried out, then you're basically just looking at a massive restriction there. So I've removed mine, uh, and we're going to now obviously use that extra area to flow more air. Uh, let's take a look, uh, go for a little drive, see what sort of improvement it makes on the numbers. So really surprisingly, that uh, removal of the intake trumpets has removed a decent restriction, and uh, we're seeing a 5 degree reduction in the intake temperature at idle. Uh, once we're hitting 30 miles an hour, it's down to 14, um, 40 miles an hour down to 12, and then 50 down to 11, which is a brilliant improvement on the stock intake system. Really impressively though, uh, we're seeing peak mass airflow increase uh, considerably, I say a little bit up to 156.1 grams a second. Now that is a big enough difference for me to think that this has been responsible for it, this modification. Um, it is a little bit more air for the engine to breathe with, uh, it's a little bit colder than it was before. Uh, all in all, that will register as an improvement in the performance of the car. It's going to be negligible, you're probably not going to, uh, to notice it greatly. The butt dyno might tell you that it is going quicker, because it sounds a bit quicker, sounds a bit gruftier with that open air intake, but yeah, in terms of on the road performance, you're probably not going to feel all that much different. It's just nice to know that the performance is actually an improvement over stock, albeit by fractions of a degree in this ambient air temperature. So hopefully this has given you a great insight into how to actually build a cold air intake for your X-Type. Um, I have been really happy with this and uh, I hope that you guys have been able to take away something from here to uh, understand how to better modify your car with one of these and not simply plonk in a, uh, a cold air feed and expect it to work. Uh, Ultimately, if you uh, like the video, please you know, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and yeah, we'll be adding more over the coming months. Until then, everybody, stay safe, and thanks for watching.